Madhudi acknowledges Muhammad's problem in his commentary. During this period, a new type of Muslim, called the Munafalkin, or hypocrite, began to appear. They professed Islam, but were not prepared to abide by the consequences. There were some who had entered the Islamic fold merely to harm it from within. There were others who were surrounded by Muslims and therefore had become Muslims to safeguard their worldly interests. They knew good Muslims were terrorist thieves. So Muhammad came up with a plan to separate the hypocrites from his raiders. He had his dog bark. We had appointed the Qibla, which you formerly observed, only that we might know him who follows the messenger from him who turns on his heels and doesn't submit. God knows all, so this cannot be God speaking. These words must therefore be Muhammad's. This was surely a hard test, except for those whom Allah has guided. And Allah was not going to make your faith fruitless and go to waste. Surely Allah is merciful. Since bowing south versus north isn't a test, we must read between the lines and assume Muhammad was testing Ansar and emigrant obedience. He needed to know whom he could count on to raid, terrorize, and plunder his enemies. Quran 2 verse 144 We see the turning of your face. We shall now turn on you, a quibla that shall please you. Turn then your face in the direction of the sacred mosque at Mecca. Wherever you are, turn your faces in that direction. The people of the book, Jews and Christians, know well that the Kaaba is the truth from their Lord, nor is Allah unmindful of what they do. When God has to lie, there's a problem. If the Jews thought the Kaaba was godly, why did they pray facing the site of their former temple in Jerusalem? More importantly, why did Muhammad join them? Further, how could the Kaaba be sacred when it was a pagan shrine? Unable to perform miracles, the Prophet dismissed their significance. Quran 2 verse 145 Even if you were to bring the people of the scripture book all the signs, they would not follow your quibla, nor are you going to follow their quibla, nor indeed will they follow each other's quibla. This is another Allah oops. Christians never had a quibla, for Yahweh's spirit resides within us. Allah claims to have inspired the Gospels. He ought to have known that. If you, after knowledge has reached you, were to follow their vain desires, then were you indeed clearly in the wrong. Quran 2 verse 146 the people of the book unto whom we gave the scriptures know this revelation, as they know their own sons, but lo, a party of them knowingly conceals truth. Like all things made of man, the deeper one digs into the Quran, the more its flaws become apparent. Ponder the impossibility of the people of the book to whom we gave the scripture, believing every time the Bible referenced something happening in the land of Israel, in the city of Jerusalem, on Mount Moriah, or in the magnificent temple of Solomon, it was a purposeful deception. They would have to believe that it was possible for the thousands of events chronicled in the Bible to have actually occurred in Arabia, at a rock pile in a barren and deserted ravine, that a thousand years later would become a motley collection of mud huts called Mecca. They would have to believe that tens of millions of people conspired together over the course of two millennia to write the Jewish temple in and the Muslim Kaaba out of thousands of pages of the most meticulously maintained and broadly read and distributed scripture of all time. They would have to believe that Muhammad, the pirate of Medina, was actually talking with Yahweh, the God of the Bible, and telling the truth about what had happened in another place, in another time. It's so preposterous it begs the question, does anyone really believe Islam? Or, as Ishak and Madhudi suggest, are they all hypocrites, merely going along to keep from losing their possessions and their lives? The translations that read, Recognize him, Muhammad, rather than, Know this, are equally outrageous. Muhammad is suggesting that the Jews of Yathrib recognize him as their Messiah, but were concealing the truth. 
Yet in truth, the Jews didn't even recognize Yeshua as their Messiah, and he fulfilled hundreds of exacting prophecies regarding his genealogy, birth, time, life, mission, death, and resurrection. Muhammad didn't fulfill one. So to say that the Jews recognized Muhammad's prophetic credentials as they recognized their own sons tells us a great deal about the mindset of the man. He was as delusional as he was egotistical. The next five verses wallow in the new quibla. The most important line warns the raiders not to fear the hypocrites. Quran 2 verse 150 Do not fear them, fear me. Motivating men to murder requires conditioning them to hate first. The intended victims must be dehumanized. Quran 2, 171 The semblance of the infidels is one who shouts to one who cannot hear. They are deaf, dumb, and blind. They make no sense. Quran 2, verse 174 Those who conceal Allah's revelation in the Bible, Scripture book, and thus make a miserable profit thereby, selling it to Muhammad, swallow fire into themselves. Allah will not address them. Grievous will be their doom. Since they're destined for hell anyway, why not kill them? Quran 2, verse 175. They are the ones who bartered away guidance for the error and torment in place of forgiveness. Ah, what boldness they show for the fire. Their doom is because Allah has sent down the book in truth, but those who seek causes of dispute in the book are a schism of great opposition. Since this is written in code, or maybe just written badly, it provides the entire equation. It confirms that the Jews sold Muhammad the Bible stories he used to make himself look like a prophet. As we have discovered, Muhammad changed these to suit his agenda. Then, since the Quranic accounts were different, Muhammad accused his suppliers of selling him a faulty product. He said that B and Q were once identical, but that the Jews corrupted B so that they could argue with him about Q. Quran 2, verse 177. It is not piety that you turn your faces east or west, but it is the quality of one who believes in Allah and the last day, the angels, the book, and prophets, to spend your substance in spite of love for it, for Muhammad's kin, for orphans, for the wayfarer, Muhammad's mercenaries, for those who ask, and for the ransom of his captives, his POWs to be steadfast in devotional obligations and paying the zakat tax. Although two of Islam's five pillars are based upon the new quibla, we are told here that it isn't pious. And while it may be a detail, Allah should have a better sense of direction. The old quibla was north of Medina, and the new one was south. Neither were east and west. Further, as with the first attempts at religion in Mecca, the first try in Medina was centered on Muhammad.